All right, everybody, welcome once again to another little broadcast of Monica at Home. I am your lovely little chocolate tree of the evening and cute black girl next door, Miss Monica Foster, most likely best known from my official website, www.monicaf.com, but also from the website that I made specifically for this broadcast, www.monicaathome.com. Now, today's Friday, finally. Hope everyone um, is having a really good uh, Friday so far and everything. I know I, I have. I've, I've had a good week. I've had a really good week. How's y'all's week gone? I hope it's gone okay. But uh, before we really get into everything, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and give out the Skype ID if any of you have any questions or comments about adult entertainment industry news, gossip, events, happenings. Um, also, if you have any dating or relationship questions or issues, feel free to Skype in at Monica at Home 01. Again, that's Monica at Home 01. I have my Skype up and running and ready to go in case anybody uh, wants to Skype in. Anyway, um, you know, I'm really glad that I'm still continuing to discuss adult industry news and gossip and whatnot because a lot has happened within the porn world over this week quite a bit I'm actually uh, shocked but also um, pretty happy for one person in particular and that young lady well I won't say I'm happy for her but the situation at least will open some doors for her the um, person I'm talking about is Casey Jordan I mentioned her um, a couple broadcasts ago, actually. She was a young lady who was having a, you know, what seemed to be a hard time, and she was getting very emotional and whatnot, and um, a director friend of mine actually wound up coming to her aid. But it appears that Casey Jordan is another Charlie Sheen mistress. Yeah! That actually um, surprised me. I think the story broke either last night or yesterday. I'm not quite sure. But um, if you guys just Google Casey Jordan and Charlie Sheen, there's tons and tons of news coverage about this. Everywhere from TMZ to... Uh, actually, let me go ahead and Google that right now. Casey Jordan, Charlie Sheen. And if any of you want to follow along with me on some of these links that I might be visiting. Just go to monicaathome.com. But uh, yeah, it looks like every, everyone's reporting this from TMZ to LA Weekly, the Huffington Post. Anyway, here's the situation. There was some sort of a party that Char Charlie Sheen had at his house. You know, he has a real affinity for the pretty young porn girls, okay? Um, for those of you who have been living under a rock, he just recently had a situation with a beautiful young girl by the name of Capri Anderson, but that went very awry, extremely, you know, something weird happened there. But uh, it looks like Casey Jordan had an encounter with him, along with another young lady who uh, I believe is um, represented by LA Direct, Melanie Rios. And... Um, I mean, both these girls, you know, these are the girls to watch in the porn industry at this point in time. And not just porn, the mainstream industry as well, because I'm sure that either both or one of those girls is going to wind up getting some sort of a TV deal or something. Um, but it's, it's really, this is, this is, I think, a very good opportunity for both girls, even though the situation is a bit shady, because um, whatever money they're able to make from their interviews and whatnot, or whatever other um, media opportunities that they're given. I hope that they sock away that money or take that money and, um, you know, build something good for themselves with it. I think it, I think it could wind up being um, a good situation for both of them, but you guys all need to check out that little Melanie Rio. She's very pretty. She reminds me of like a young Jessica Alba, definitely. Um, I'm not sure what Melanie's Twitter is, but Casey Jordan's Twitter is twitter.com Miss Casey Jordan. She's one to watch. That girl's wild. I researched her a little bit today. She had some, it could be just a rumor, but apparently at some point she was hooked up with uh, Kevin Federline. <laughs> um, pretty 
girl. Pretty girl. She'll probably be like the new Tanner Mays of porn, but hopefully, again, with a happier result. But um, that's the future of porn and mainstream. I really think that um, a lot of porn girls are going to wind up having pretty good mainstream careers. You know, I mentioned this last broadcast, but Tori Black is in a mainstream movie. Um, of course, Sasha Gray, she's a porn star to mainstream crossover. There's so many. There's just so many now. It's interesting. And you know what? It makes sense. And I'll tell you why. Because um, the thing about porn girls is that they have a built-in vast fan base, quite usually, which can easily translate into um, dollars for mainstream entertainment. I mean, when you look up some of these girls on websites like Free Ones or um, I don't know, Adult DVD Talk, you know, you'll see that there are tons and tons and tons of not just males, but females too, who are interested in what's going on with these girls. I mean, that's why I think that they're going to be the new generation of mainstream actresses. And why not? You know, I think mainstream needs to pretty it up anyway. So many mainstream actresses that I don't want to look at. What, what I think is interesting about um, this whole phenomenon right now in regards to, uh, you know, mainstream guys, uh, whether they do it willingly or not, bringing porn stars to, up to into mainstream attention via whether they're hired for a personal appearance or what, is that it's something that really can only happen with um, a female porn star. I, I actually um, read certain forums to where there's a lot of very hateful people, and you know, they like to diss the girls and be like, oh, she's a whore, she's this, she's that. And you know what? She's not. She's a girl trying to get by in life and, you know, earn an honest living for herself and a legal living for herself, which is through adult entertainment. And um, I think a lot of these people who are haters on these girls really are males in the industry who can't do it. There's only been one male that I can really think of who's become a bit of a... Uh, adult to mainstream crossover via the mainstream media and that would have to be Dale DeBone because um, at one point in time he was connected to uh, the tennis star Jennifer Capriati so I guess you could do it if you're a male but you have to be very attractive to the female celebrity whoever she might be but let's see what else did I want to cover today and let me go ahead and you know pause and say hello to everyone in the chat room how are y'all doing today? Oh, <laughs> someone in the chat room is like, Ron Jeremy is not handsome, but he is mainstream. You're right. You're right. Well, he was handsome, though. He's not, well, I guess we can't say he's handsome now. But when he was younger, in his prime, he was not bad looking. And the thing about Ron Jeremy is that he has a very good personality. He's very personable, very likable. You know, there are some good looking guys and girls who are good looking, but they're not likable. But then there's... You know, and that's, that's, that's not very helpful, but, um, you know, personality does count for quite a bit. It does. It does. But it doesn't count for everything. You still have to take care of yourself. That's very important. But before I get back to adult industry news, gossip, and events, I do want to tell you guys about my book, which you can purchase on Amazon.com, Getting Into Porn, The Handbook, A Simple Guide to the Porn Industry, by me, Monica Foster. If any of you are curious about the inner workings of the porn in industry or, uh, you know, how to get in and, you know, retain ownership of quite a bit of your work that you should develop on your own, then get my book. It's on Amazon.com. It's under $20. You know, you can also download it um, to electronic format via Kindle or uh, to your iPad if you have an iPad for under $10. But, um, you know, it's a good book. In fact, let's go ahead and go over one of the chapters in the book right now. Why not? What can we talk about? You know, since we're talking about looks, let's talk about chapter four. Where will your look fit in? And that's page 17 for those of you who might have my book. All right, here we go. Chapter four, where will your look fit in? There is a vast array of porn industry niches and markets, but where do you fit in? Hmm. When most people think of a porn star, the image of Jenna Jameson or Tara Patrick probably first comes to mind. 
However, with the current restructuring and expansion of the adult entertainment world due to the internet's growth, which has made both the distribution of and porn attainability easier than ever before, many new and nearly untapped adult niches and markets have been discovered. Yes, the younger blonde woman with a prototypical slim build in conjunction with huge breasts is still a very popular look. But today, some of the most popular porn stars, for example, Tori Black and Stoya, have all natural bodies. And hey, this new girl, Casey Jordan, Charlie Sheen sure liked her. She has an all natural body, too. I happen to be a very, and then I go on about myself, of course. Alternative looks have found their audience as well. Websites such as suicidegirls.com top the charts. Joanna Angel leads one of the punk goth porn, leads the punk and goth porn scene, and she does quite well. She even has her own label. Even Adam and Eve Pictures is ju jumping on the alternative trend with the addition of Tegan to their contract girl lineup. Yes, she's a Barbie glam girl, but she has a full sleeve tattoo. Porn fans are making it known that they find beauty and sex appeal within women of all types. The success of adult and fetish BBW model Amazon Amanda is proof of that. And then I go on. I'm not going to read it all to you because I want you guys to buy the book. But um, it's very true. You, you know, you don't have to, have to be a perfect looking person to be a porn star. You know, it all has to do with how receptive individuals are to you. But um, I think the most important thing to do um, if you do decide to take a path into porn, which, you know, I think that if you are going to do it right now, you're best off starting your own website, webcamming, and producing your own content from wherever it is that you are. But, um, and make sure you check out your local laws and everything if you do so. But, um, I think in 2013, that's when we're going to have a resurgence of the porn industry. Um, it's had a rough few years lately, you know, and there's a huge sweep out that has to take place, and it's already happening. People who don't need to be around, they're not going to be around. And um, some people, I think, are very bitter about that, which is why you see them raising hell online about this and that and this and that. But that's just how things go. Life goes on. Things change. And um, what's great about the Internet's presence is that though I think it's, you know, made the adult entertainment industry, you know, I, to take like a big, you know, the internet has pretty much punched the adult entertainment industry in the gut. But um, I think it had to happen because I think that with everything happening in regards to the internet um, and tube sites and pirating and whatnot, it's drawing some lines. It's showing who in the industry is willing to do what in order to survive. It's also showing who's cutthroat and who's not, who's honest and who's dishonest. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's all about transparency, like Obama says. Transparency. So, uh, and you're right, Ego, a.k.a. Emily. That is entertainment. You know, it's not just how all, everything I'm talking about doesn't just have to apply to the porn industry. It applies to the music industry. Um, mainstream film and television, uh, software companies, a, a lot of things, quite a few things. But there's more things I wanted to talk about today. First, let me go to my notes online. Oh, here's something I really want to bring up today. For those of you who are not aware, there's an Oprah porn, and the trailer is now on YouTube. I will be linking it up on... Uh, monicaathome.com and I don't, I'll have to watch the movie. I'll have to watch it. Hustlers who distributed the porn. It's, it's called, uh, let me look up the name of it. The exact name for all of y'all out there. Let's see. I think it's called an E untrue, yeah, it's called Untrue Hollywood Stories Oprah. I don't think that this particular movie needed to be done. Some of you out there are going to say that I'm a hypocrite, being that I starred in Not the Cosbys. But here's the reason I don't think it should have been done. I don't think there really needs to be any porn parodies done of any real person. Um, you know, when we did Not the Cosbys, those were all fictitious characters. I love Oprah. 
very much. <laughs> I look at Oprah almost like a family member, even though I've never met her. Um, she's done so much good for people in the world. She's gone through so much. For many of you out there who might not be aware, she just reconnected with her half-sister. Um, I don't think that this movie needed to be done. Um, I do think that it was cast very well. Um, it stars Bella Moretti, a guy named Carlos Carrera, I believe, and Misty Stone. But um, I don't think it should have been done, and that's just my stance on it. But will I watch it? Probably, because I'm going to review it. So, you know, that's something I, I have mixed feelings about, because I think it's a good opportunity for the people who are in it, possibly. I mean, maybe not, though, because... Um, you know, they might wind up being blackballed from doing much of anything in mainstream after this, you know, being that this is being released. But, you know, I'm sure it'll launch their porn careers. So, you know. But another thing I want to bring up is Montana Fishburne. Montana Fishburne is back in the news. And let me find the news story that I found on her. Give me one moment. For those of you who are not aware, Montana Fishburne is the daughter of Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus from The Matrix, and many, many, many other movies. And uh, many of you know that she did a porn movie, which um, I covered extensively. I, I guess mainly because um, I can really relate to where uh, Montana Fishburne's coming from. Not entirely, but... You know, she has a wild streak. She has a wild streak. So anyway, um, let me read this to you. And I found this on PerezHilton.com, a mainstream news blog, or gossip blog. Here we go. Montana Fishburne reportedly not only duped her father, Lawrence Fishburne, but also her lawyer, Sean Chapman Holly, when she was recorded apparently drinking what was thought to be bleach, but ultimately was just a horrible hoax. According to sources, Lawrence hired a private investigator to follow his daughter around last August because he was so concerned for her well-being. However, she caught on to him and drank the bleach to put on a show. However, when the lawyer, Holly, discovered the video, she attempted to use it in her client's ongoing criminal assault case to prove that Montana was that shit and wanted the, pros and wanted the prosecutor to convince him to get a plea deal that involved rehab instead of jail time. So at this point, um, and you know, none of us will ever really know the truth. What if, it, what if it wasn't a hoax? What if she just doesn't want people to think that she was really willing to kill herself? You know, one thing that I've realized when um, you find yourself in the mainstream media and people are saying bad things about you, and this is something I can really talk about considering um, the issue that I was involved with in regards to Lenny Dykstra, but um, when you are in a scandal of any sort in the news and people, you know, you read all these gossip blogs and you read, you know, in the news what people are saying about you and on these websites, whenever there's a news article, there's always an the area for comments and people write all kinds of crap about you. Um, it really does affect you deeply. And it makes you, it, it can make you feel nearly suicidal. And I don't think anybody should ever be ashamed of, of ever, you know, no matter where you are in life or no matter who you are, feeling like you might just want to end it all. You know, of course, when you are in that situation, you need to talk to somebody. You know, and I've been fortunate to have, you know, people around me who love and care about me to where I can talk to them. And, but... You know, anyone who calls someone batshit crazy or um, psychotic or, you know, just um, anything negative when they've attempted or have thought about attempting suicide, that's so wrong because, look, unless you've walked in somebody's shoes, you just can't judge. You can't judge. So, I'm, you know, I have to say two thumbs down to Perez Hilton for writing this up the way that he did. But, um, you know... Karma's a bitch. What comes around goes around. So let's see. What else do I want to talk about today? What else? What else? What else? 
Um, oh, well, here, there's a news story I saw. I believe it was on uh, XBiz. A big congratulations to Miss Nina Mercedes. She recently got a uh, distribution deal with Exile Films. Her company is Heartbreaker Films. It's so cool. You know, there's so many um, women, you know, who are starting their own production companies. And I really do feel that the future of porn is going to be women dominated. I mean, one of the largest and most successful studios right now, which is Digital Playground, um, is run by a woman. I believe her name is Samantha Lewis. I'm very impressed by her. And, um, you know, I, I really feel that women are going to wind up bringing more emotion and more um, substance into adult entertainment. And that's what's been lacking for quite some time. You know, I think that adult entertainment has become so uh, negative and just um, gross in many ways. And um, I think that you can have sex but have it be um, beautiful. You know, there's some companies who do it, you know, and some don't, but more should. So let's see, what else did I wanted to discuss? Um, hmm. Well, you know what, let me go ahead and bring this up. I am currently casting for my first release, which I hope to begin shooting in March. So if you are a female who is African American, slim build, limited tattoos, um, and you have some experience, please send me your headshot, you know, some photos, um, you know, any past adult or mainstream work that you've done. What I'm going to be directing is, you know, it's not going to go beyond um, tasteful but hardcore boy-girl scenes. Um, just if you're someone who's interested in being in any of my adult films and you fit the description that I just gave you, please contact me through my official website, monicaf.com, and um, send me your info. Also, if you are a male um, who is over five foot 11, because I want to cast mainly tall guys, um, under 35 years old, good physique, again, limited tattoos, and you're interested in getting into adult entertainment, via any of my projects, please send me your info again through the contact form on monicaf.com. I am currently casting. I have two of my main roles and the first thing that I want to put out there by the end of this year cast, but um, there's quite a few other roles, so send me your info. So we're going to go ahead and conclude this broadcast now. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm going to hang around the chat room to answer questions and comments. And again, if you have any questions that you want to ask me directly, you can always Skype in. My ID is Monica at home 01. But thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see the archives of this show, just go to youtube.com forward slash Monica at home or just go to www.monicaathome.com. So thanks everyone for watching. Bye-bye.